So these are the uh, the two key components in the gearbox. You've got the main shaft and you've got the lay shaft. So the main shaft hooks onto the input shaft by that little ring there. goes underneath there, the lay shaft goes beside it. And the idea is the lay shaft is uh, constantly moving and is also constantly meshing with the main shaft. Thus, this is reverse gear, the straight cut one. Basically you've got first, second, third, and fourth. Um, in fact, we're missing fourth gear. I wonder where fourth gear's gone. Can't be far. It's disappeared in there, I expect. Anyway, so no, brain's gone blank there. That's not fourth gear. That's the um, that's the the input shaft there. So that goes into the gear on the inside of there. There's a gear. That's where that meshes to. So the idea is that these channels here are where the selector rods sit, and these move backwards and forwards to mesh the gears and then in the middle here you've got the synchro rings um, that allow the gears to change without grinding too badly so this just turns constantly and meshes with all of these gears these gears turn constantly and it depends on where the selector is as to which gear is locked onto the output shaft and that's the output shaft the input shaft here is separated from the main shaft so they're not they're not constantly linked get it However, that is constantly linked to the input shaft. So even when in neutral, this is spinning. As long as the clutch is up. So the clutch is down, this stops spinning. But the clutch is up, this will be spinning. Because that spins when the clutch is up. That spins. That meshes onto this. It's a constant. So this spins. These, these, this is just one unit, by the way. That's, that's not separate gears on there. The only bit that's separate on this is the, uh, the ball races on each end. Um, and depending then on where the selector moves, depends on which of these gears then is sending drive through the output shaft. Right, let's try it again. Main shaft of the gearbox, it's in constant mesh with the lay shaft, which I showed you a bit earlier on and it's been taken up. Here's the lay shaft. So the lay shaft sits in constant mesh like that. Let me put it on the top so you can see. Um, and it, it basically just drives constantly. So. What happens is we've got different gears on here. We've got first gear, you notice the output shaft isn't turning. First gear, that's the drive for second gear, which is also linked into the selector mechanism for first and second gear. That's second gear against free, third gear, fourth gear on the end. So if we want first gear, what we need to do is you use the gear stick, and the gear stick moves the selector this way. I just need to it's a little bit sticky, there we are. So the selector moves. Now, when I try and turn first gear, it's locked to the shaft. The shaft wants to turn. However, second gear still spins, third gear still spins. We then want to choose second gear. Sorry, I'm going to try and do this without... There we are. Second gear went in. First gear is now spinning freely. Second gear is now engaged and driving the output shaft. If I turn that, you can see it's turning the output shaft. Third gear is not engaged. Go to third gear. So what you need to do is, first of all, the selector rods work a little bit clever now. Oops, sorry, I'll just jump back into first. Selector rods will go back into neutral on the first two gears. And then the selector rod for third gear, which is this one here, will need to move forwards to select third gear. So third gear is now driving the gearbox. And to go into fourth gear, it goes exactly the same way as the other one, goes the other way, and then moves around. So what you've effectively got there is a four-speed gearbox with two key selectors. If you wanted to go into reverse gear, then um, what then happens is it's not this selector at all because this stays where it is in the middle, driving the shaft, but with none of the gears in mesh. And then there's a separate um, um, lever which is, goes on the side of the gearbox here, and I'll demonstrate that later on. But <clears throat> if we now take one of the gears off the gearbox, what you end up with is a wedge of bulk rings, synchros, bearings and so forth. It's important to put those back in the right order. You get the gear itself, which comes off like that. This is first gear. And in the middle of here, there's a nice roller bearing raise. That's first gear. Okay, um, let's pop that down. And then another little bearing race. Um, and here's the selector ring that's fixed onto 
the selector or the, I guess synchro ring that fixes onto the selector ring. The selector ring is fixed to the shaft. So when I now I've removed that, you can see that's the selector ring. Okay, it's fixed to the shaft. The gears that drive the out drive the the, the, the car are rolling freely, but the selector shaft is fixed to the shaft itself. You'll notice also in here little holes. I don't know if you can see those little holes. That's where the lubrication comes out. Because obviously you need a load of lubrication for these bearings, like that fella, that sit inside. That's why it's important to uh, make sure that the lube is all in there. So all I've done so far is taken first gear off. I'm not going to bother stripping the rest of it down. It's in really good shape, this, uh, this gearbox. I'm just going to clean it up, um, put it back together again. It rolls nicely. Uh, there's nothing wrong with any of the bearings. Um, they, they, they all rotate really smoothly, really freely. Uh, no issues at all. Um, so it's going to go back together again once I've got the correct shim for the lay shaft, because I need to check that first of all. Um, then I can put this in. So I'm going to order the lay shaft shims. Um, and then it's all going to go back together again. So just pop this back in. So that... This fella, the synchro ring's got tooth on it. There, that tooth goes into a slot here. So when you put it back together again, you need to make sure that's engaged. It's got a little bit of give on it. Um, and then when we select a gear, and that ring needs to, this one's sticky for some reason. There it is, it goes. And then it pulls back, and I won't pull it back too hard because what'll happen is, it'll end up all flying apart and there it comes off and that's second gear free again the second gear wants to engage right let's put the first gear back on the shaft so we've got a ring which goes on first of all that's a little uh, bulk ring i think i guess it slows things down um then we've got this ring which has got little cutouts on it i need to find out what these are all actually called this one's going to be called dennis from now on um then we've got the bearing race, which goes on, needle roller, so that goes on to the shaft, that spins nicely. Then we've got the gear itself, which goes on to the shaft, a little bit of a One of the... Hello. Right. One of the um, issues with this particular gearbox is you've got to assemble the first gear once it is actually um, in the gearbox itself so you can't this won't fit into the gearbox on the shaft so you've got to put this into the gearbox then put the shaft in assemble it all yeah then you've got to put the lay shaft in while the lay shaft is attached to the front plate it's a right fiddle right what we then got we've got the bearing race which sits on this side of this washer and we've got this bulk ring could be whatever that then goes on to the axle there. the axle the main shaft there should just quickly point out just in case any of you are using this as an instruction video which i wouldn't recommend um that washer at the back that had the step on it i put it back on the wrong way around the washer goes on to the clean flat side which has got a beveled edge on the inside of it because there's a step on the tail end of the shaft so we've got the bearing this is where the bearing um, sits um, for the transfer this is this this chunk of the shaft this oh this chunk of the shaft is inside the transfer box um, and this piece here sits inside the gearbox so if the bearing goes back on again and that goes on then it's a nice snug fit there's no play if i put this on the other way around then I'd be a little bit annoyed because first of all the main shaft wouldn't fit into the gearbox but secondly there'll be a wedge of play in first gear that much play okay so it's quite important you get these washers and things the right way around what I do is I go onto the Land Rover um, manual that I've got and I print off the various parts diagrams for the order of events and so forth they're very useful I wouldn't recommend you do this thing blind um, but there is nothing fearsome about these um, on the front of the main shaft there's a lock washer here and um, behind that there's a shim um, and that shim is to take up any of the play <coughs> on the on, on the shaft itself so that's that 
Now, what I'm going to do next, I think, is clean this lot up, clean myself up. 